Welcome. Today we would start with our lecture series on world geography. We'll be working on separate continents in separate classes. For each continent, we would be taking two lectures. One talking about the physical features and the political aspects. The second talking about the economic and the resource base of that region. Now, the first continent that we would start with is Australia. Under Australia, we would have three lectures. First, talking about the relief and the political features, then the economic aspect, and the last talking about Oceania, that's the island group surrounding the region of Australia, the Polynesia, Melanesia and Micronesia. Along with that, we'll focus on New Zealand. So this whole region is the region of Australasia or Oceania, which includes Australia, Tasmania. So this is Australia. You have Tasmania, the island group of New Zealand, along with the smaller islands that could be seen here. Now, this Australia is unique because it's the only island continent that is there and it's the sixth largest country in the world. It totally lies, as you can see, in the southern hemisphere and in the eastern hemisphere. So the extensions are 10 degrees south to 44 degrees south. And then you have east to west, you have 112 degrees east to 154 degrees east. As you can see a yellow line running through here, which is the Tropic of Capricorn. In the world map we have already seen in the center you have the equator 23 degrees north and south. In the north you have Tropic of Cancer, in the south you have Tropic of Capricorn. So Tropic of Capricorn nearly cuts Australia into two equal halves. If we talk about the oceans, you have Indian Ocean towards the west, Pacific Ocean towards the east, southern ocean towards the south. Now this was the oceans. Coming on to smaller seas, which are smaller as compared to ocean, the first important sea that we would talk about is Timur Sea. Now Timur Sea separates Timur Island from Australia. Then you have Arafura Sea. This sea separates Australia from Indonesia. Then you have Papua New Guinea that is separated by Torres Strait. Now what is a strait? A strait is a section of water that connects two bigger water bodies. So this water channel connects two bigger water bodies and this is known as Torres Strait separates Australia from Papua New Guinea. If you move on to south, you have the Bass Strait that separates Tasmania from Australia. Further, if we move on to the group of New Zealand, in New Zealand you have North Island, South Island and a small Stewart Island that is present here. Between the North Island and the South Island in New Zealand you have the Cook Strait and between the Stewart Island and the South Island you have the Fuvix Strait. So these are some of the important straits that are present here. As we said, you have the oceans and then you have the seas. Besides seas, you have gulf. Now there is a small difference between a gulf and a bay. We say Bay of Bengal, which is smaller as compared to Gulf of Mexico. So gulfs are usually bigger. There are two important gulfs that could be seen in the region of Australia. One is the Gulf of Carpentaria. So this region is the Gulf of Carpentaria. And in the south, you have the Great Australian Bight. So these two are the major gulfs that are seen. Besides this, they, you have numerous other smaller bays that could be seen. Looking on to the history, this region, Australia, was initially discovered by a Dutch sailor and he was named as Jenzoon. Now Jenzoon initially talked about Australia. But later on, in 1707, a uh, British sailor, James Cook, was the first who talked about Australia in detail and later on in 1901 you had the Commonwealth of Australia that was established. Fin finally in 1890, sorry, 18, 1986, so it was 1901 that Commonwealth of Australia was established and in 1986 the British rule completely wiped off from Australia. So those was the kind of hierarchy or the kind of developments that took place in the region of Australia. Now coming on to first of all the physical divisions. We'll talk about political divisions in a while. Before that I'll introduce the basic physical divisions in Australia. Very simply if we want to put you can divide this region into three. 
The western part, which is known as plateaus, we call it as western plateaus, the central plains and the eastern hills or mountains. So a very simple division to remember, plateaus, plains and mountains. Now we'll discuss each of this region one by one. When we talk about plateaus, predominantly we have this region which is rich in mining. Since it is rich in mining, you have iron, nickel, zinc, uh, uranium. So all those are mined in this region. Now talking about some of the major ranges that are seen here. So you have the MacDougall range and the Musgrave range. MacDougall range and the Musgrave range. So two important mountain ranges. Then you have a Darling range here. Very important thing to remember. Darling range, the mountain range is present here and the Darling river is present here. So make sure whether you are marking east or west. Then you have the Hammersley ranges. So four important ranges that you need to know. Besides these four important ranges, you have important deserts that are present. So these deserts could be remembered in the order of Great Sandy Desert, Gibson Desert, Gibson Desert and Great Victorian Desert. Besides this you have Tasmani Desert that could be seen and Simpson Desert that is present. So these are some of the important deserts that could be seen. Below the desert you have the Nullabur Plains that are seen here. Then two important things, you have two important islands. One is the King Island and the other is the Kangaroo Island. So the name of the islands themselves are important. Kangaroo is one of the major animals that's found in Australia and hence the name becomes important and you have the name of Kangaroo Island that's present here. Now this was when we are talking about the western plateaus. Coming on to the plain areas, you have uh, the central lowlands, what we say, the Great Artesian Basin. Now you have the region uh, of Queensland and New South Wales. The region between the Queensland and New South Wales would be the region of Great Artesian Basin. Now these Artesian Basin is the largest groundwater reservoir that could be seen in Australia. It has, basically it's an aquifer, so you have the two rock bodies and between that you have the water that is trapped in and that is known as aquifer. So Great Artesian Basin is one of the major aquifers that is seen here. Besides that, one important lake is here which is known as Lake Array. So you can see it here. This region is the Lake Erie. It's an inland drainage. It's a kind of shallow lake that is present. And during the dry months, you have white salt pans that are being deposited in this region. If we move further towards east of the coast of Queensland, we'll be talking about the political divisions of uh, Australia in a while. So if we move, this is the region of Queensland. If we move on to the eastern edge, you have the great Australian reef. This Australian reef is a kind of coral deposit. Now this reef is definitely an hazard to the navigation that is seen in that area. Besides that you have the eastern highlands. Now as we said eastern highlands runs from north to south. In the north it starts from the Cape York Peninsula. So the northernmost region as you can see here is the Cape York Peninsula. Starting from there you have the Great Australian Range running far south till the Bass Strait. So this whole region is the uh, Great Australian uh, Range or the Great Dividing Range what we say. Now this Great Dividing Range in the southern parts you have two important mountain ranges. You have the Blue Mountains and the Australian Alps. So Australian Alps. Now Alps are here. Alps are also in Europe, but these are Australian Alps. So wherever you have the European civilization that could be seen, you have uh, similar names that could be found out. But this Australian Alps lies in the southeast region of Australia. Now, this is the region where you have 
the most abundant drainage network that is seen. So you have the Murray River. This Murray River joins with the Darling River. And as we said, the Darling River lies on the eastern side while the Darling Range lies on the western side of the continent. Again, one of the most important tributary that joins the Murray River is the Murrumbidj. So Murrumbidj is the most important tributary of Murray River that again joins with Darling River and forms one of the most important fertile regions of this whole, re uh, whole Australia. Now if we look on to the vegetation patterns in Australia, I could do a very simple demarcation for the vegetation pattern. For the vegetation pattern, I can say you have the tropical region. So this whole vegetation is tropical. Below this region and the region of the Tasmania is the temperate vegetation that could be seen. Then you have the desert type of vegetation that is seen and finally the Mediterranean vegetation. The most common species of trees that is found in Australia is eucalyptus. Eucalyptus is also known as gum tree. Now one important animal species that thrive on eucalyptus here is known as cola. Cola is again a marsupial. So you have a lot of information that's running together. Marsupials are the animals that carry their baby in their pouch similar to kangaroo. So kangaroo is another marsupial and it belongs to the ruse family from the last ruse that you can see and there are nearly 40 different varieties of kangaroos that are found in the region of Australia. So another marsupial cola beer <coughs> found uh, or thrive on the leaves of eucalyptus leaf. So it's again <coughs> found throughout the region of Australia. Now desert vegetation mainly in the form of acacia. Mediterranean, you have eucalyptus, pine, junipers, jara that are seen. Then you have tro tropical vegetation which is mainly palm and uh, eucalyptus. Temperate is very important. Here you have the grasslands which are known as downs. So when we talk about grasslands in America, you have prairies. You have pampas in South America. You have steppes in Europe. Then you have downs in Australia. So these downs are present in the temperate region that you can see here. And why these are present here? Because it's one of the most fertile area which is being drained by the Murray Darling River as we have already discussed. So these are some of the important things that we cover under the political aspect. Coming on to the physical aspects. Sorry, uh, that was under the physical aspect coming on to the political aspect. Under the political aspects, this region of Australia is divided into six self-governing regions and two centrally administered regions. Very, very important to understand. There are two centrally administered regions and six self-governing regions. Now, the two uh, centrally administered regions will learn those and the remaining would be the six others. So you have one centrally administered region which is the Northern Territories. The another lies here which is the Australian Capital Territory. Now if we look on to the other six self-governing regions, those are Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, <coughs> then you have Tasmania, South Australia and West Australia. Now the cities or the capitals. The best way to remember is what you do is your bachelor's, master's and postgraduate or, or doctorate we can say uh, after post-graduation. So you have BSc. So you start with Brisbane. Then you have Sydney. Then in the Australian capital territory you have Canberra. So you have B for Brisbane, Sydney, Canberra. M for Melbourne, A for Adelaide that lies in South Australia, West Australia you have Perth, PH and then you have Darwin in the Northern Territories. So if you are asked the order of the cities in an anti-clockwise fashion it would be BSc, MA, PhD starting from Brisbane reaching on to Darwin and if it is uh, that's a kind of clockwise arrangement. If it is anti-clockwise, you'll have to go other way around. So for the clockwise arrangement, you have BSc, MA, PhD. That's something you need to remember. So that's again very, very important. Then you have the island of Tasmania separated by Bass Strait that we have already
already talked about and under this you have the capital which is known as Hobart. So these are the important places that you need to know under Australia. Now the deserts we have already talked about. Below the sandy desert you have the Gibson desert and finally the Victorian desert. On the side you have the Tanami desert and the Simpson desert. And below the Great Sandy you have the Little Sandy. So Great and Little go together. Coming on to the major mountain areas. So as we have talked about the major mountain ranges. From those mountain ranges, you have some of the important peaks that are present. The highest mountain peak that is present is Mount Kosokiwo that lies in the region of the New South Wales, uh, sorry, the Victoria and you have it here. Then you have another important mountain ranges or the mountain peaks that could be seen. The mountain peak that lies in Tasmania is Mount Osa. So those are some of the important mountain ranges. Then you have the major rivers that drain through. So the Murray Darling Basin, one of the most important basins. Airy Lake, which is located here, is an inland drainage. It does not is not fed by the major rivers. It's a kind of example of inland drainage. Then besides the Lake Airy, you have another important lakes that could be seen. Those are Lake Disappointment, Lake Carnegie, Lake Austin, and then you have Gardenia Lake. So these are some of the important lakes besides Lake Array. Lake Array is the most important lake that you need to remember. So those are the major lakes that we go around. Then you have the gulfs and the straits. So you have the major straits that we have already discovered and the major gulfs. So gulfs, two major gulfs we have the Great Australian and the Gulf of Carpentaria. Straits, we have already talked about Torres Strait and Bass Straits. Besides that, you have smaller straits like Carlins Strait. Then, uh, besides the Gulf, you have smaller bays like Encounter Bay that's found here. So, those are some of the major gulfs that could be seen in this region. And finally, coming on to the wildlife, you have all the major wildlife that we have discussed on the map here. So, the regions where you can see kangaroos are here. The mainly the central region of lowlands. Then in the northern areas you have dingoes which are wild dogs. You have platypus towards the plain areas. Emu is present mainly uh, in the western Australian region. Emu is a flightless bird. Then next important bird is lion bird. Lion is the name. Uh, lion means basically a musical instrument and it has a very long tail that could be seen here. And this bird is known as lion bird that is seen here. Then you have cola beer mainly found on the eucalyptus trees as we have discussed. It's again a marsupial that is seen. Uh, besides these that are given in the map you have Kokabura, which is again a very important bird, similar to a kingfisher. It's famous for its laughing call that it makes. So these are the major wildlife that are seen in this Australian region. As we have talked about in the next class, we will discuss about the economic resources in Australia. And one more class where we'll talk about the island group of New Zealand and the regions of Oceania. Uh, we have covered all these and the study material is available in the IAS means GS paper 1 section. So you have the complete handouts there. You can refer those and we'll be covering all important locations. So stay tuned for further updates on world geography. Have a very good day ahead.